G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me. Here I am just getting some manure. I get it in bags from the local manure place that I go to. A, a, a guy that gets it from their stables, their racehorses, they're fed on a on a grain. But anyway, the crux of it is though, the reason I'm doing this, this is more like a vlog. I'm going to start trying vlogs. I want to grow my channel more. Um, you know, the truth is uh, I put a lot of effort and time into these videos and um, you know and that's at the expense of other stuff and if I'm not getting I have to be honest here if I'm not getting enough uh, it's one I do enjoy and love doing it but I have to I have to crack a balance between doing these videos uh, and how much time it takes me to edit them to make them semi all right the only real income I get is from my military pension and uh, anything that I make through these videos which isn't a very much. Being a home dad you know I've got a lot of responsibilities and a lot of things to do and I really need to bring in more money uh, from this if I'm going to put in so much time into it otherwise I need to put time into other things that are you know just as important or even get a second job um, to support my family so my wife doesn't have to work as hard and when my wife and I uh, were, were had children it became really apparent that both parents working in pretty pretty good income jobs but high responsibility jobs like I was a warrant officer a squadron sergeant major my wife was a medical warrant officer and uh, you know we we're all both on fairly good salaries but the problem was we we're dropping our kids off at night to at well at night time it was about five in the morning we'd have to drop them off at the childcare center then we'd only pick them up at night time and we'd only get to spend the weekends with them really and, and after school and it was real manic and this is when they were really tiny and we, we realized then that there was no good I had an opportunity because not because of all my injuries from my military service. I didn't retire with these uh, because of these injuries. I didn't retire at all on any invalid pension or nothing. I was just lucky that I was under the old DFRDB, which is a Defence Retirement Benefit Scheme, like some of the old politicians got. And it's really minimal. You know, it brings me in a really no, pension rate, uh, like old pension rate. Um, but, but regardless, uh, I was lucky enough to be on that and could re retire, sort of retire from the workforce at, at 38. Uh, and I thought, well, well, we thought I'll take this opportunity to um, retire from the military. Uh, even though my career was progressing, um, I was told that I was going to Warrant Officer Class 1, Regimental Sergeant Major, and I probably would have been a Major and then a Colonel after that, Lieutenant Colonel. Probably Lieutenant Colonel would have been probably the highest I'd reach. Um, by now, um, but in, in a sense, I'm not whinging, but I for, I forego my career uh, in order to have a more stable life here. So my wife Ed was adamant she wanted to follow her professional career. She basically said to me, "There's no way I could stay home with the kids." And this is a modern world, and so that's exactly what I did. I decided to stay home. Um, and take on that responsibility as foreign as it was to me and being a mere male and uh, you know made a good fist of it and you know eight or nine years later um, uh, probably four years into that I decided I needed to make something extra but what could I do what could I do you know in between school times I mean when they're at school and and that type of thing and there's not a lot out there so I devised I'm doing a lot of work in the garden and I thought well maybe self-sufficient me you know well I didn't come up with that name straight away but um, a lot of people are asking me you know how do you grow this deal what did you do there well your garden looks fantastic and uh, and I I thought to myself well well actually my wife said well why don't you just put it online so that other people can can read it instead of telling everyone the same stories all the time just refer them to a web page or something with some of these recipes and this and that on there 
And I said, oh, that's a great idea. And then I had the thought, well, maybe I could start a second career. Maybe I could make an online career. And uh, so that was my big dream. So about four or so years ago, I decided to really research all my IT stuff and uh, learn how to build a website from scratch and learn how to maintain it, created a forum. And then I stumbled on YouTube, of course. I didn't really start doing much videos in 2011. I, um, I was sort of terrible in front of the camera. And uh, anyway, um, I lost my train of thought a little bit for there, but it's kind of uh, terrible talking about this while I'm hovering over a couple of bags of manure. <laughs> I don't know if that's a sign where my life is sliding at the moment or not. Um, but this is a vlog and I think I owe it to you guys, seems that I just cracked my 10,000. Um, just to bleed my heart out a little bit to you. So we got to the point where I had these big dreams of making, you know, um, enough money that that not only um, would support us and take the pressure off my wife, but also make my family proud of me, that I could take on something else, something completely different. You know, I didn't just retire from the military and go and go work for a logistics company or a security company or something. You know, I retired from the military and I did something completely different with my life, shared information, and at the same time got paid for doing something I love doing. But four years on, I'm making several thousand a year out of my websites and, and my YouTube channel. It is growing, but it's not growing at a fast enough rate for me to be able to sustain it. So I'm, th I'm thinking, um, I'll either have to go and try to find some type of labourer's work or something like that and do this in the meantime or um, I do some vlogs and I change something, maybe I'll make another channel. I have an idea for a more comedy type channel um, um, around prepping that I thought might be quite funny uh, and that could get me v more views while I'm still maintaining my sort of you know, semi-serious side of doing self-sufficient me and maintaining the website and all that. Um, you know, or I could just continue with these vlogs and see if they get shared around a fair bit and um, people start in, you know, liking my story, can relate to me um, and, and perhaps pick up, you know, with more shares, more likes, uh, more views on my, my channel perhaps my income will pick up enough that you know I can convince my wife of, of among all things that this is actually worth it and that I can make a career online. Well anyway let me finish off this vlog with um, I, I don't want you to get the wrong idea that I'm, that I'm spilling my guts and I'm begging for money or anything I'm, I'm not doing any of that you know I don't want any big donations or anything like that um, I'm just simply, this is my first real proper vlog of me being, just telling you everything that's going down in my life and it's not a real easy thing to do. I'm just a bit unsure if it's a right thing to do as well because, um, you know, once stuff is online, it's online forever and this stuff can be used against you and, you know, it can be spread around to places that you really don't want it. Um, but, hey, you know, that's the nature of doing this online business. Um, I'm just reaching out, that's all. And, and I'm just being totally honest, just in case people are thinking, oh, I'm having a la dar life here, all self-sufficient me. Well, it's not like that. It's a lot of hard work to get your garden up and to maintain an acreage and to be a home dad at the same time and to be a, a husband. That's, uh, that's what my thoughts are today. Let me get into this. What I'm doing is getting these manure bags that I had in the trailer that I picked up and I'm going to put them down the back near our compost piles and uh, whack a tarp over them so they can compost down because them straight into the garden you can put them straight into a garden bed but if you put them straight into a garden bed well then um, you're going to have to let that garden bed rest for a few months you know unless it's been broken down already and this is pretty green manure so it needs to be broken down I'm going to
I'll just reposition the camera. I just wanted to say um, quickly that this vlogging business of me just logging what I'm doing sort of every second day or whenever I can upload it so that I can get more out to you, um, I just didn't dream it up. It came from the comments section below. Um, several people asked, uh, uh, especially on my 10,000 video I think it was, um, that if I could upload more, they said, um, one, one lady said, look, I don't really care about your quality so much. I'd just like to see more of your videos, more of your day-to-day -day stuff, more of your sort more like a vlog. And um, I took that comment on board, of course. I read all the comments. Um, I try to answer all of them. Uh, I do usually answer all of them. Um, but I re definitely read all the comments. And uh, the other thing was, um, one of the guys mentioned that I should stop with this camera. This is the only real camera I've got besides my phone. And um, go buy a GoPro, put it around my waist, so make this type of filming easier. Or, you know, put it on my head or something. And I would, but I just can't afford a GoPro at the moment. Um, but maybe down the track. It just depends on if I can make this channel into anything. Um, I certainly would invest in that type of equipment, but for now I've got to stick with what I've got <laughs> All right, so I'll just empty this up People often ask me is uh, working on an acreage and that and doing what you do lots of hard work um, yeah, usually it is. It is. It can be quite consuming, time consuming and quite laborious. I wouldn't recommend doing starting an acreage like this off in self-sufficiency like in your 60s or 70s. I would say start it earlier and then you could move into your 60s and 70s, no problem. I mean, my grandfather vegetated garden until he was 90. But, uh, um, but on this size property, I think in your 70s you probably want to start scaling down. Um, and I wouldn't be moving to it in my 60s or 70s, I'd move to it in, you know, my 30s, 40s, that type of thing. <laughs> but the reason why I, I use synthetic, I'm not, I could use a tarp I suppose, but synthetic like this or this type of matting is quite good because it lasts a long time, it doesn't get damaged by the sun, but it's also porous and it can let moisture through and the rain through which is a good thing, gets, lets, the, uh, lets the pile breathe. Just right. So I'll whack some rocks on here. Yeah, I'll grab my phone. I can't. I'll try this with one hand. We'll wheel it back up the hill to and get some rocks. Going past the veggie garden. Veggie patch is looking pretty good. Got tomatoes, sweet potato, lots of things growing at the moment. All those greens, lettuces, kale, cabbages, all very healthy. Got peas at the front there. Yeah, it's all looking very good. Beautiful winter's time. It's a bit of a hard thing to do with one hand. Oh, I've got a, some scraps here. I've got some some old rocks that I haven't used, so I'll uh, I'll put them in, and then um, yeah, weigh that down. Then I'll wrap this up. Okay, I've got the rocks, and I've got a plank of wood. I just whack that on top. A rock in each corner should do it, I think. Yeah, and I'll just leave that there for a couple of months. And that should rot down nice. It'll attract a lot of worms and everything. Come on, I'll, I'll give you a look. 
There we go. Now I'll show you the manure I'm talking about. You can see how green it is. You can see tinges of green. You may not be able to see it so much with the camera, but it's definitely light and brown, isn't it? And I can smell it. I can smell the urea or the pea through it. And uh, it's very soft. Okay, if I break that puppy open, see how green it is inside. It really should be black. Black or at least brown and dry to be safely put on the garden to grow stuff or mixed with compost or whatever. So when that breaks right down, the worms get into it and it dries all up and turns brown and hopefully even black. Black is the best. Black is the real good stuff. So that might take two or three months to do that. But once that breaks down, then uh, that'll, be, uh, that'll be right. That's what my aim is by doing this method here. Down the back there, these are all my hens and ducks in that area. Okay, there's the end of my vlog for today. I'll try to post more of these. Um, if you do like this style of video, apart from the bleeding heart stuff, I understand that can be a bit cringeworthy. Um, but, you know, that's like I said, if this is the way vlogs are, um, sort of spilling your guts out, well, that's what, I, that's what it is for me. This is my way of vlogging anyway. I've got to be honest with you guys. Um, if I'm not, one day I'll just disappear because I just won't be able to afford to keep doing this and putting so much time into making videos for YouTube when I'm just not uh, getting the monetary gain from it. I, I, I need to put that into something else or get another job or whatever um, to keep my family happy, particularly my wife. So anyway, if you, uh, if you do like this sort of day-to-day -day what's up in the garden and what I'm doing with everything, vlogging, um, and me having just my thoughts of the day as well, um, support, support by sharing the video around, um, liking it, uh, watching it. Uh, if you're watching it to the very end like this, thank you very much. I really appreciate your support. Uh, like I said, I'm not begging for charity here or anything. I'm just telling you guys how it all is. I want self-sufficient me to continue on the way it is. I'm just facing some headwinds at the moment. And uh, hopefully we can get through them. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.